Um, watch your integers. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. Oh, it's yes. Where do I start? You start at negative three. I start at negative y three y on the y-axis. And what does your slope tell you to do? You go up, go up, up one, one and over and two. right two. So up x over two is the same thing as one half x. Correct. X over two and one half x are the exact same thing. Okay. This is an example where if I need to go backwards, then I'll go down one, and but I'll go two, left two. two. Because okay. negative divided by negative is really still a positive. Um, when you label it, two things. Make sure you have arrows and labels. When you label it, make sure you label it with the original. Um, equal signs. If it's just an equal sign, or if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, those are the ones that are connected solid. If it's just less than or just greater than, those are the ones where it's dashed because that's the boundary, but it doesn't actually include them. Hoy or Vox? Hoy. Hoy. What does the H stand for in Hoy? Horizontal. Horizontal. So you go to where Y is negative 4, and you draw a line. If that's Hoy, then that must no. be? Vox. This is Vox. How do you tell if it's Vox or Hoy? Absolutely. The X, the Y. So X equals is a what kind of line? Vertical line. So I go to where X is one and I draw that. Very good. Okay, next. And I probably will not do all of these bottom ones. I will probably kind of pick and choose and then give you answers based on that. Um, you have to figure out the equation of the line, which means you have to know the M and you have to know the B. In the first problem, they give you the M, but they do not give you the B. So what you have to do is go and fill things in the way that they, where they go appropriately and solve for that B. So we start with our slope intercept form. I don't like this marker. Wait, are we not doing the middle part? Oh, did I skip something? Yes. Yeah. What did I skip? Nothing. Just Nothing. this? Yeah. It's, it's easy. We're fine. Is it just find the slope? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's just y2 minus y1. Yeah. I'll read you those answers in a sec. Let me do this. Okay, so that's your y. There's your m. There's your x. We have to solve it for b. How? Get how? You multiply the corner and negative 6. Okay, so what's one fourth of negative 6? I have no idea. I think it's negative one and a half, but you should double check me. It is. Ne yeah, negative one and a half. Okay. Yeah, negative one and a half. Okay. So first thing I did is I multiplied this. I get negative 1.5. How do I get the B alone? Yeah. You, you, add add one and one half. you add one and a half to both sides. One plus one and a half is two, two and a half. Now, one of the biggest mistakes is kids get this far and then stop. What did I ask you to do? Right. Write the equation. Have I written the equation? No. Now I need to go back and I need to write the equation. So y equals what? One four x plus two. Perfect. Could you write x over 4? You could write x over 4. You could write 0.25x if you're not graphing it. All of those are the same. Number 64, you have to find the slope first. They didn't hand you the slope itself. So I'll do it real quick. I'm going to call this 0.2. I'm going to call this 0.1. So 13 minus negative 7 over negative 2 minus 2, that's keep change change, that's 20, that's negative 4. I got negative 5 for my slope. Did somebody actually get it or are you just copying it? Yeah, okay, good. And then you just go through and do the same thing we did over here. That's your slope. Do I care which point you plug in? No. Don't care which point you plug in and get your equation. Let me read you the answers to those middle sections before we do this bottom one. Uh, 
All right. The answer to number 59 is 15-6, which can be reduced. I didn't reduce it, but it can be reduced to three halves. Or yeah. 1.5. Yeah. 15 over 6 uh, okay. is the yeah. same as 3 halves. About 5 over 2. 5 over 2. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm wrong. Not Wait, what is 5 halves. 5 halves. 15 over 2. 15 over 6 is the same as 5 over 2. I was taking out a 3 round. Uh, number 60 should be negative 1. Hold up. So, <laughs> we put negative 10 in no. the same. Oh, go ahead. In the same lane as like yeah. 6. Correct. So, they have to be in the same lane. They the and they have to be in the same order. So, if you were to put negative 10 first, you have to put negative 3 first in the bottom lane. No, if you put negative 10 first on the bottom, you have to put 6 first on the top. Oh. So, uh, Matthew, they don't go in the same lane, lane then. The lane doesn't. They go the same lane. No, way. lane's like a this. Oh, they know. So, no. just so like it would be six minus okay. negative one. So, you write in them like fractions. Over negative oh, ten. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You've done this all the yes. year. Yes. Are you yes. just learning this now? Yes, So, hey, Matthew, you, you and I were some, on not for all, guys. It's not like it's easy. You've just gone over it. 61 and 0. Easy for yeah, some, yeah. not for all. 61 and 0. Hey, moving on. 61 and 0. And 62 is undefined because there is a 0 on the bottom. Wow. 0 is not allowed to be on the bottom of a fraction. That does not exist in our world. There that is, is undefined. Where's the zero? Where's the zero? Five minus five. Oh, I added them. <laughs> Number 64, Robin. the final answer That's like kind of weird, should be Leo. y equals negative five x plus three. I'll say that again because I know some of you missed it. How do we get negative five? The final, I did negative five right there in front of you. I got the negative five part right there. It's only the three part I didn't get. So, like, whatever you plug in, you just do that. Equals negative five. Like, what? Wait, wait. So, what was the Whatever you plug into the pot. Why did you add them to the pot? Because you have to get the b by itself. No. No. At one quarter times negative six is negative one and a half. So, you have to add negative one and a half over, but then you can shift it over so that the b will be isolated. So that you can find out what your y intercept is. And how did you get three? Uh, I did the the same way as I did this. Just like this. So y equals mx plus b. That's my m. You can pick either point. I don't care which one you do. I'm going to do this one because it's smaller numbers. This is negative 10. Isolate the B. So I get B equals 3. And then my equation is Y equals negative 5X plus 3. Um, the bottom one, I actually think that we probably will. What do we have to do tomorrow? All right, let's just do it. All right, first of all, what do I have to do with that equation? Make it normal. What does that mean? Make it, uh, y by itself. Okay. So if I get the Y by itself, I'm going to move the X over first. Okay. Then how do I get rid of the 3? I divide. I know. But somebody's going to not be able to see, and it's always those girls. So I'm giving them a second to actually see. Wow. Why don't you just write it on the okay. paper? Yeah. And you could add it in the seat. Good thinking, Matthew. Yeah, now, and then she starts a different problem. Lines that are parallel. What makes two lines parallel? Okay. The, the, the same slope, and they never cut. They gather the same slope. 
but they have different y intercepts. So, what is your slope up there? Negative. Negative one third. So, if I want a line that is parallel to that, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write parallel, and then I'm going to have same m. Okay, parallel lines have the same slopes. So I'm going to go over to that equation. I'm going to take the slope out. And then I plot any other random, in this case, any other random y-intercept as long as it's not 10 thirds. Why can't it be 10 thirds? Because that's the exact same line. So anything else plus 72. I don't really care wow. what you put there. You put whatever you want. You shouldn't have gave me this power. Now, perpendicular is harder because perpendicular has to have the negative reciprocal slope, M. Correct. So take the slope that I gave you, which was negative one third, flip it over. What is it now? Three. Three. And it was negative, so you make it a positive. positive. So your equation is y equals 3x, and I don't, again, I don't care in this case because there's no more information. You make up whatever y-intercept you want. It could still be 10 thirds in that case. That one, the y-intercept has no bearing on it whatsoever. All right, leave that off to the side. We will finish that up tomorrow with our quadratics, and then those will be yours to use as a reference. Um, That's no, oh, but as you I, as you are preparing for the test. <laughs> okay, next thing. We have to finish number one. So the pink page, it says number one on it. It looks like this. Yesterday, no. Listen, Tuesday, we did the front side together, including number four. What you had to do was finish this and then finish page number two. Um, I don't have anything. I don't have anything to send me that anymore. Wait, so we did this one on this one? Okay. So, number five, very quickly, what did I have to do? How? Oh, you would have to do like this. This is like, it's actually foil because you're doing the multiply. When you multiply, what do you do with your exponents? Add them. Add them. What do you do with the coefficients? Multiply them. What I am going to do is I am just going to show you the answer. Um, kids who were here yesterday, most of them know that they got it right because most of them had me check it. They did give you a little bit of a heads up by telling you that this is four terms. There are going to be four parts to your answer. There's your final answer for number five. Yes. 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 Plus yes. Yes. Plus 31X plus 30. Now, I was nice to you in this one, though, remember, because all of the signs are pluses. You're going to have to pay attention if there are signs that are negative that you make sure that you are multiplying correctly and then that you are combining correctly. That's not typically something that across the board I worry about with you. There are a couple of you, but for the majority of you, you're pretty good with those. Okay. Number six. I spent a lot of time going over with kids yesterday. I hate how the Regents does this, but because they do it so very often, I need you to see it so that if it shows up on the test that way, you're not completely blindsided by it. If I was doing this problem, this is not what it would look like. 
is in that how I would set it up for you and expect you to continue. So basically, this is what they're doing. The first part of this, this chunk right here, that's the problem. Okay? Not even funny. But what I would have done next is not this. This is technically not really great. What is the problem? Look at just your bold paper at McKenzie's head. Can you please stop? Where is it? I have I, don't even know. I have so much better stuff to do with my time. And, and the and you're, being, you're, 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 you're wasting yeah. everybody's time. Honestly, just send off. So the next we thing, all would be happier. Oh. Okay. I would not have put that there. I would have put it underneath. Because what they already did is they took the first step in factoring it for you. I don't yeah. like that they put it next to it because it makes you think it's one big long equation, and it's not. That is step number two. But that is not completely factored. There's something else that I can still do there. What else can I still do there? Go ahead, Mallory. Factor the second Yeah, I can factor that second set. And Mallory, because this is a binomial with a minus in between, what does it make me think? Yes. This is a conjugate pair. How do you get four? Two and two. How do you get x squared? How do you get 49? And conjugate pair signs are? Plus and minus. Okay. Just leave this one here. Now, can anything be broken down any further? No. They're all broken down as far as they can go. So now we go to the actual directions, which are find the zeros. What does that mean? It means I put a zero here, and what do I do with all of those? T chart. T chart. I know, because it's a bigger problem, but that's what you do. So then you take each little part and say, okay, well, what if it's this part that equals zero? Well, what if it's this part that equals zero? Well, what if it's this part that equals zero? And you solve them. Remembering, if you're choosing to take the shortcut, that what actually happens down here? It's the opposite of that, which showed up on one of the orange sheets the other day. They gave you this, and they wanted you to give them that. There is something in this mask that is driving me crazy, and I can't find it. Be careful with these guys. Minus 7, minus 7. You can leave it negative seven over two, or you can make it negative two and a half. I don't care. No. Whichever way you're more comfortable with. What did I say? Yeah. I meant three. My brain is going faster than my mouth is. Um, and the same thing for the second part. That'll be or the third part. Will be seven over two or three and a half. So what do we put? Two and a half. Like what do we do after that? That's it. That's it. That's your answer. Negative two, negative seven halves, negative or positive seven halves. Um, you have to be willing to try these, you guys. One of the biggest things that I've seen over the last couple of weeks is you just leave these blank. You have to try them. Okay. Um, this is actually a pretty easy one. They don't tell you what variables to use. So you pick what variables you want to use. The kids who were in here yesterday, a lot of them used R for red roses and P for pink roses. The fact that you have 24 of them gives you one equation. And then all of the money should be used in a different equation. There are my two equations that I use. Oops, sorry, you can't find There are my two equations. The red plus the pink is 24. Um, does oh, a certain one have to be on top? Uh-uh, that's a man. $3 for a red rose, $2 for a pink rose, total of $68. Now, what did I do? I took this bottom equation and what did I do? I multiplied everything by negative two. Why? So that I can lose. Yes, because then I can eliminate my piece. Positive two and negative two cancels. Then I combine everything else that's left. So this replaced this for right now. This isn't here for right now. Three R minus two R is one R. 68 minus 48 is 20. So I find out that there are 20 red roses. And then plug it back into one of your two originals to find 
the pink roses. Somebody who was here with me yesterday did it. Addy, don't put stuff away yet. I've got to give you my own paper. Or the paper. Um, somebody did it doing substitution. It was a little bit harder that way. I don't remember who it was, so just be careful. Okay? You did? I don't think it was you, though. It was somebody else, too, I think. Oh, it was out. Okay. I knew there was somebody else, too. Yes. Leave it there. Yep. Um, in general, I'm not going to tell you every single question, but I will tell you that part one, the part you're going to take on Monday is the multiple choice part. It's longer than the rest. A lot of this is going to be on that part one in some various form. But we also remember that all of your part ones are multiple choice. Okay. So that should be used to your advantage. All right. Now, let's switch to number two. And in number two, I'm going to more or less walk you through the answer. So, number one. Yes. And then find a zero. Okay, so what was step one? What did I have to do first? What did I do first? I made it equal to zero. If it's asking you to find the zero, the whole thing has to equal zero. Then from there, hey, uh, Eddie is meeting with the elevator. Thank you, man. Okay, bye. Then it's a plain old regular unfoiled. Just be careful. There were several kids who were in here yesterday who kept saying, Neil, it's factors of 20 that add to give you one. You guys, there's no factors of 20 that add to give you one. It's a subtraction. Right? So be careful about that. And then I didn't show you, but what did I do as my final step? Yes, I did the T-chart. Good, no one. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay. There were a lot of kids yesterday who kept saying to me, we have notes on this someplace. You don't have notes on polynomials. You were thinking about irrational numbers. Those we do have notes on, and those are different answers than this. But if I take two polynomials, two strings of math stuff, and I add them together, do I get another string of math stuff? Yes. yes. Yeah. So that is true. Same thing with subtracting. Why? It's probably do with this x and probably with this then it's zero and zero is a polynomial. Yeah. Um, it is? Yeah. Choose. Polynomial is a monomial, which is zero or x or any of those kinds of four x or combinations of, there, of them. Why is subtracting going to be true? What is subtracting really? Adding the opposite. So it goes back to the adding. So if adding is, then subtracting is going to be. Multiplying two binomials, that's FOIL, or big, long, extended FOIL. But if I multiply, I end up with another polynomial. Somebody who was here yesterday, and I explained it to you. Would you explain to us the bottom one, why the bottom one is false? Okay. Are you taking it? Yeah. Okay. Take so it, Lucas. If you divide, like, say you have x to the third divided by x to the fifth, you get x to the negative second now negative stop square, stop is he okay are you all okay with that yeah yeah when you divide you subtract your exponents keep going lucas so you have a negative exponent which would be one over x to the second stop because that's what a negative exponent does is it creates a fraction and you can't have um isn't it you can't have a um, an exponent no the uh You can't have x in on the bottom. You can't have a variable on the bottom. In the definition of a polynomial, there are no x part, or there are no variables on the bottom of a fraction. On the top, absolutely. Not on the bottom. Nice job, Lucas. Okie doke. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right, let's keep going. I don't even remember what the next question is. Are you awake? It's the line. It's the line. Oh, the line one. 
Which question? Which line? Two. It's line two. You guys, this is a binomial. That's that's two terms. What should your brain be thinking immediately? You should be thinking conjugate pairs. Did I break that up using conjugate pairs? No. No. So that is what my mistake was. What should it be broken up at? Six. X plus six and X minus six. I wrote a, a crazy version of that, but you get what my point is. Okay, this one is a Matthew question. Me? Yeah, it is. I would absolutely go through and put this into my wrapper, do table, and see if it matches. Nope. Put it in, see if it matches. Nope. Put it in, see if it matches. Nope. Please be careful. See that X up there? It's an exponent. Yes, that is an exponent. So you have to use a carrot in order for that to work. No, no, no. Yeah. All right, on the back, all I needed you to do was realize what are the basic shapes and what are their basic equations. This is a line. The basic linear equation is y equals mx plus b. What is this called? Parabola. That is a parabola. Parabolas are always going to have x squared. This is where you're using your quadratic formula sometimes, you know? So you have A in front of the X squared, B in front of the X, and C is the constant. Um, a couple of you keep taking the X's with it. It is not the X. It is just the number in front. It is just the coefficient. This is what all of your square root functions look like. They're a sideways parabola, but they're only half of it. Sometimes they're upside down. Sometimes they're right side up. Um, why is it only half of it? Why does it only, why can't it come down here? Because the square root is only a half of True. something that's square. Okay. Why doesn't it get an arrow on this end? Because it doesn't go over that way. Why can't it go over that way? Because it's not a lot or a negative. Because that would result in a negative under the square root. That doesn't exist. That's the one where your calculator says error, 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 error. Okay. This one you absolutely should not get wrong. I will find you and bop you in the head. That's a <laughs> Absolute values always make B. B. Value B. Absolute value, value makes a B. Y. And then this is our final one. This is our exponential. You're going to know it because the X is your exponent. Remember, this is a growth one because it's going up. But it can also be a decay one. It can go down, right? Um, this one I'm going to save till tomorrow because there's a an interesting trick that you need to be good at for the final. Where did three come? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and I I did that with almost everybody yesterday. So I'm going to do that again with you. Got it right because you did it with Seth and he helped you. <laughs> I got all of them right, Miss Rose. Um, finally, now, Matthew. See previous oh, no, comment, Matthew. Huh? See previous comment. Oh, I was so cool. What do you this mean? This is an exponential. How did I know this was an exponential? Because it's like increasing every time. Not only is it increasing, but what is it increasing by? Same thing. Nine times out of ten. When I see that percent, it is an exponential. This particular one is increasing. That is why my growth factor is bigger than one. If it was decreasing, what would your growth factor be? Smaller than one. What is this number in front of the growth factor? It is the starting amount. Now, there is somebody, and I think it was that, and Kennedy, who did this the other way. Now, they're going to lose points because they didn't write the equation that went with it. But what they did do is they started with 100. They figured out how much it was. They had it labeled. Day one, this is how much it is. Then they did day two, this is how much it is. They got the same answer. So they're going to get answer. They're going to get credit for their work. They're just going to miss uh, credit for not writing the equation, for not following the direction. What if we just 
write the equation and then do it. I did the right equation. What are the right answers? Only okay. okay. <laughs> I wrote the right okay. equation. Oopsie. All right. Again, over the weekend, I would run through these again. We'll try and get those answers. You have the right answer. Take a separate sheet of paper and try and get them because that's the bulk of the stuff on Monday. Yeah, leave your white papers there. What I'm going to bring to you right now, listen, what I'm bringing to you right now is the review that we're going to go over tomorrow. Good morning. Would all current and new National Junior Honor Society members please report to the auditorium at this time? Thank you. Leave your white papers here. I'm bringing them over to round two. You get as much done as you can because you're going to want to go over number four tomorrow with me also. Okay. Um, so this is your homework for what you can get done of it. You are Yeah, Mrs. Katz, the other thing that I want to Well, yeah. Yeah. 